A year ago today, Arkansas visited Tennessee for the first time ever. The Vols were ranked fourth in the nation, while Arkansas had struggled to one and four. But on this punt return, Orlando Waters would go 71 yards to shave the Tennessee lead to just two, with 2.28 remaining. The Hogs went for two, but failed. But moments later, this onside kick would be recovered by Arkansas's Darwin Ireland. The Hogs maneuvered for a 41-yard field goal attempt with six seconds left, and Todd Wright just got it through. In front of 95,000, the Racerbacks scored the upset, 25-24. Today in Little Rock, the rematch. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the best in regional college football. The Southeastern Conference. SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Lee Apparel. With regular, relaxed, and loose-fit jeans, Lee is the brand that fits. By Ford at your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Shoney's Breakfast Bar, the best breakfast in town. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. It is morning, but the state capitol is rocking. Welcome to our Lee Apparel SEC Game of the Week, War Memorial in Little Rock. The Razorbacks hosting number 11, Tennessee. Welcome to a gorgeous football Saturday. Bob Carpenter and Tim Foley. Tim, as up and down as these hogs have been the last couple of weeks, how do we get a reading on this football game? I think it's fair to say that they're in an emotional transition. We saw them against Alabama, and, and they thought they'd hit the bottom and then slid a little lower against Memphis State, but rebounded in grand fashion against Georgia. And if they can keep the option going, they've got a shot against Tennessee. Well, Philip Fulmer has a great option at his disposal. It is his quarterback, Heath Schuler, completing 65% of his passes this year, and he's only one away from tying the single-season touchdown record at Tennessee. He's a tremendously gifted athlete, got, has great leadership ability, but where he's really made progress this year is his understanding of the game. He gets them in the right play at the li line of scrimmage. I'll say 43 points a game worth. Now, the Razorbacks aren't averaging that much. Their season has been a roller coaster. Let's have a look. Come from behind wins at SMU and against the Gamecocks. A disaster at Bama, shut out at home, and a big win in Athens just one week ago. So we went to Philip Fulmer of Tennessee and asked him what he would expect from these crazy hogs. Well, we have to be concerned about Arkansas because they've made progress from the beginning of the season and had the big win at Georgia. And, and you can tell that they're getting better and they've, they've matured. I think their quarterback is, con is continually getting better. Uh, making things happen with the option now, which we played basically five to teams that had rather throw the football and they'd rather be physical. And uh, that's a concern. Speaking of that option, Oscar Malone had knee surgery. Johnson, a sophomore. Hebert, the freshman, now the tandem at tailback. Yeah, every school in the SEC has backs that can carry the ball. The key to the option this afternoon is going to be Barry Lunny making the right decision at the line of scrimmage. Hasn't always done that this year. Like his team, Barry has had an up-and-down Arkansas season. Bob Kessling on the sidelines and more when we come back to Little Rock. Arkansas three and two, Tennessee four and one. Not serious injuries, but nagging injuries. A bit of a concern here today, Bob Kessling. Look in the Georgia game, Arkansas quarterback Barry Lenny got his shoulder banged by making a handoff in that game. Well, he missed a couple of days of practice, and of course there was some concern whether or not he'd be able to go at full strength today. We had a chance to talk with Arkansas coach Danny Ford before the game and get his thoughts on the health condition of his quarterback. Well, he, he's pretty healthy. He uh, missed uh, Monday and Tuesday work, workouts. Uh, came back, started throwing a little bit Wednesday and Thursday, but he should be well. And the thing that we uh, he's not used to is running the football very much. He got hit on a Georgia pretty well, so uh, something he's just got to get used to. He came back, and played good after he played very poorly against Memphis State. So uh, looked like 
that we got some other guys some work, and it looks like we can play the other two if we have to, but uh, Barry should be ready to play. And, of course, if Danny Ford had his druthers, Lenny just be handing the ball off today because Arkansas would like to run it and keep it away from Tennessee's offense. But Tennessee has some concerns injury wise on their defensive front. Shane Bonham, who had a great game last year against Arkansas, 10 tackles and three sacks, missed a day of practice because of a knee injury. He is suited up, should start today, but Tennessee's defensive front could, again, be a very much a key in this game if they can slow down the Razorbacks' running attack. They lost some great people from last year. Now, the win should be a factor here today. Tennessee has won the toss. They will defer, so Arkansas will have the football. That's the north end zone. Flags whipping in at a good pace from the northwest, it appears. And Arkansas defending the south goal. We will receive the football. 17 miles an hour in that wind. Mid-60s, humidity nice. Partly cloudy skies and cool here in Arkansas today. A delightful day. The first time these teams met was in 1907 when Arkansas was called the Cardinals. Tennessee beat them 14 to 2. John Bexford is the Tennessee kickoff man. Orlando Waters, who played the big role in the punt return last year, back along with Carl Kidd for the Razorbacks. So the wind at his back as Bexford lets it go. This one will come down at the goal line for Waters, and he will run it out up the far sideline. He'll break open over the 30, out of bounds in front of the Tennessee bench, and they will mark it at the 38-yard line. Waters averaging 22 yards of return this year, and he got a lot more than that. Well, Duke had one last week for 100 yards against the Volunteers, and... Good block by Kidd. Waters finds the sideline. Finally run out of bounds by Bexford. Yeah, the kicker, the man who ended up making the stop, Barry Lunny Jr., a sophomore out of Fort Smith, completing 53% so far. Razorbacks open up in the eye. And the give to the first man, and the volunteers stack it up pretty well. Carlton Calvin, the fullback. Here's a look at the Mazda starting lineups for the Razorbacks. Lunny joined by Calvin. Marius Johnson gets the start at tailback. Metters and Cotton on the outside, and Kurt Botkin outstanding at tight end. Up front, all the starters are back now that they have Brian Cornish back healthy, but he's a backup to Verl Mitchell over on that right side. Don Strubing playing at center, a true freshman. After the three-yard gain, the Razorbacks go on second and seven. And there's not much there for Calvin, a six-foot-222 junior out of Keller, Texas. The Volunteers play a 4-3 defense with Wilson and Morris, the bookends. Shane Bonham nursing that knee up front with Paul Yadkowski. The backers are Kidd and Tally. Tally making a lot of tackles over that right side, leads the team. Ingram in the middle there. Deron Jenkins and Ronald Davis on the corners. And they have Brown and Parker, the safeties. You got a little problem here with the scoreboard clock. Yeah, there's not a coach in America that wants to look up and see first and 53. <laughs> and now they've really got the scoreboard messed up. It's gone all the way back to 15 minutes. And the officiating crew led by Dick Burleson, will have to sort things out. Last year in the second half against Georgia, Arkansas went almost exclusively to the ground game as Lenny hurt his shoulder, and then they were having success. He carried the ball for 60 yards against Georgia, 59 of it in the second half. So Georgia was taking away the tailback and giving Lunny a little bit more room that they, than they wanted to. And a little bit of a pounding as well, as Danny Ford told us. Lunny, not a big kid. He goes 6'2", 185. He's a rangy sophomore. Doesn't have a whole lot of meat on him. A uh, bit of a contrast to the 6'3", 212 of Heath Schuler. Lunny comes from a great football family. His father was his head coach. At Southside High School in Fort Smith, his granddad, John, was a four-year starter at Arkansas 1430. 1430. in the late 40s. They want to set the clock at 1430. Now they put it at 1430 and keep on running it. 
They don't play that many games here in Little Rock, so I guess they're getting used to things. Razorbacks, one of those teams, sort of like Alabama, that splits their home games between playing on campus and then playing in the big city. Birmingham for the Tide, and of course, Little Rock for the Hogs. And in modern football history, Arkansas has had a lot of success in this stadium. More recently, they've run upon dry times. Well, that was one thing Danny Ford wanted to instill in Razorback fans, the knowledge that they could come to a home game and see the Razorbacks win. That's something they weren't able to get done last year in that turmoil of a 92 season. Now the clock's back to 1430. Third down and six for the Razorbacks, whatever time's remaining. Backs are split. Money with a long count and a draw play. Off the left side, Oscar Gray into Tennessee territory. The right corner, Ronald Davis, had to make the tackle as Oscar Gray, who'd run the ball 26 times for only 91 yards this year, rambled a bunch that time, a 16-yard gain on third down. Well, if you're the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, Larry Marmee, you don't want to let Arkansas think that they can produce. And this time, Gray pops it to the outside, and he's a, he, he came in at 272. Fullback guard, and now he's down to 250. Nice run, nice hole. First down. At the 41 of Tennessee, Lunny with a rollout. Goes straight ahead to his tight end, Kirk Botkin. For all of that, the Razorbacks will gain maybe a yard. Well, he wanted to let it go earlier, and Botkin wasn't looking. Had a linebacker running right with him on that release route. You know, Tim, we saw something on that third down play. The Razorbacks ran right at Horace Morris. Recent Tennessee opponents have been doing that this year. That's why the guy who plays outside him, Ben Talley, leads the Tennessee team and tackles the right side linebacker. Of course, they're trying to replace Todd Kelly in that position. And not much for money off the left side as Reggie Ingram came from middle linebacker to make the stop number 41. The thing about Horace Morris is he's, he's a pass rusher, and that's what he does best, and he gets up field. You notice they came underneath him. Yeah, they pinched him, didn't they? Yeah, and so what, what you'll see the, the defensive coach is doing for Tennessee is gaming him a little bit and trying to confuse the, uh, the draw blocking of Arkansas. Another third down play, this time third and seven. Backs are split way wide. You figure they're headed out into a pattern. It appears he did well short of first down yardage. Lunny was feeling his way, and Marius Johnson might have been the guy at tailback who came up with the football. Lunny coming out, uh, obviously having a, a problem with his left shoulder. Watch, watch Morris this time. 85 goes inside. He's able to penetrate the pocket. Lunny comes out. The ball gets knocked loose, and he gets hit. Making the recovery, so he is definitely having a problem with his shoulder. Doyle Preston, the punter, trying to hang one up end over end, and this one looks good for the Razorbacks. Down around the one yard line. Del Delco, a free safety on special teams, and what a great pooch by the left footer, Doyle Preston. 35 yards, and the Volunteers are deep in their own territory. And this crowd made a lot of noise in Little Rock during our commercial break because the Razorbacks have the Volunteers pinned way back near their own goal line. It'll be tough operating procedure for Heath Schuler and this multiple set offense of Tennessee. Schuler, a 6'3 junior from Bryson City, North Carolina. He's completing 65% of his throws this year. He's up over 1,100 yards already. He will be the new record holder for the single season touchdown pass mark when he reaches 19. Dewey Warren back in 1966 has the record. Dewey is here today. But that's not what Schuler's thinking about right now. He will run it out himself and get two or three yards before the Razorbacks push him back. 
The loose ball picked up by Charlie Garner, but that play was dead when forward progress was stopped out around the three, maybe the four-yard line. East Schuler with Garner the tailback, Mose Phillips the fullback, Faulkner the flanker, and Corey Fleming has caught 18 passes at split end. David Horn the tight end. They're replacing Mike Stoll at left tackle, Brian Spivey at center, and Rodney Gordon at right tackle. A lot of changes on the offensive and defensive lines for Tennessee this year. Second down and eight. It's Garner off the left side. Not much there. Waylon Wieshawn was all over him. Out on that right side defensively. Henry Ford and Marcus Adair at the flanks. Vernon Way to tackle. Junior Soli playing nose guard. Ireland, who had a big game last year. He's the SEC Player of the Week, by the way, defensively. Smith and Wright, the other backers. Orlando Waters, a big play man. Back there with his three supporters. Tyrone Chapman, who is one of the emotional leaders of this Arkansas defense, is missing from his strong side linebacker position, a hamstring injury. Mark Smith replacing him. Third down and four. Schuler looking, rolling. Nobody open downfield, and the Razorbacks have him at the six-yard line. Marcus Adair from Razor End, the right defensive end position, on the stop. Vernon Wade with some support as well. They brought the, both cornerbacks over to the strong side. You see Mark Smith dropping back there. Adair in pursuit, number 50, and then Waters releases, comes up, and helps on the tackle. Nice job by Arkansas. Obviously, this crowd is ready to get behind their Razorbacks. They're ready to see another upset. They should have good field position here. Tom Hutton in his own end zone. A low snap. Nice spiral. This one hanging up like crazy. Waters fumbles it. And Tennessee appears to have the football. The Volunteers will gain about 39 yards on that play. And Reggie Ingram came up with it after a 40-yard kick fumbled by Orlando Waters. Nice punt by Hutton, Bob, but it never turned over. And as a result, it started to dip back and drop to the inside. It started to fall away from him there because the nose never rolled over. He didn't make the catch. And Tennessee gets the first break of this game. And a big one. Arkansas had a chance to take early control. Now he Schuler's at his own 45-yard line. Single back set. Garner rolling out, but he goes left side. On the catch and breaking a tackle is Mario Brunson, and he's down to the Arkansas 33. Mose Phillips, the fullback, on the reception. Schuler drops back, finds the open man. Everything's fine now. Make the tackle. They got a three-yard gain. Missed tackle. Good job of running by Mario Brunson, who doesn't get that many chances. And uh, he picks up... Oh, that was Mose. He picks up another 15 yards. He's hard to bring down. Last year, he had a fantastic, unbelievable run against Arkansas. Mose Phillips. Well, he's a good receiver. 13 catches for 107 coming in. He picked up 23 on that one. Right. And a big play on first down. Two big damaging plays to the home team on the punt and that first down. Other Razorbacks are backing up at their own 33. You know, these numbers are kind of difficult to see for Tennessee, and I think Brunson had something to eat before this game. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw him run like that before. It wasn't him. Charlie Garner in the backfield as Schuler goes right side, and he rifles one outside for Corey Fleming. Fleming had seven catches for 76 yards against the Razorbacks last year, and that's his 19th catch this year. He's approaching a couple of UT records. Seven touchdown catches this year. Alvin Harper has the record of eight. And he's only three away career from breaking Harper's record of 16. Second down and three for the Vols. He can do a lot of things with a situation like this. They'll go straight ahead. 
and Charlie Garner's down to the 21-yard line for the first down. One of the things that was really slanted in Arkansas's favor last year in the Tennessee game was field position. And as the game started out, it looked like it would begin the same way again for the Razorbacks, but then the drop punt and the missed tackle. And Danny Ford knows how it how important it is to get off on the right foot if you're trying to create an upset. First down at the 21. Schuler with some play action. He'll go left sideline and a great grab over there inside the 15-yard line. Dean Peavy, the man, defending on Billy Williams. What a story Billy is. He's out of Alcoa, Tennessee. Went to Juco for a while. Caught 68 passes in northeastern Oklahoma. Grades kept him out last year. He had to sit around and watch a lot. But he is doing some kind of job on that Tennessee offense this year. Three touchdown pass against Florida. One last week against Duke. And all big ones. And Tim Arkansas does not want to be in second and three against Tennessee and Heath Shuler. This is the second consecutive time they've had that. Inside draw. Corner dropped the football. Arkansas has it. up with it that's no surprise Garner was working his way back inside and somebody pulled the ball out as they drifted back in there let's watch this develop Garner fights his way back inside and Willie Johnson was right there when the ball slipped out Garner was about to go a long way and big play by the Arkansas defense and report second fumble recovery of the year we're back after this from your local SEC station Big turnover by Tennessee, and it might have been an offensive lineman's foot that caused the fumble by Charlie Garner. Watch it there. Kevin Mays comes across. Good trap block, and look at the hole back to the inside. He's going a long way. He isn't going to get to anybody till Carl Kidd, and the ball pops out. Kevin Mays' heel got his arm and jarred the football loose. And first down, the Razorbacks at their own 12-yard line, and Marius Johnson gets the call. A sophomore out of Austin High School in Houston. He had a big day with Dexter Hebert at Georgia last week. Johnson had 55 yards and Dexter had 51. Didn't play much in the spring. He had a hamstring problem. Getting his rhythm here as we approach the middle of October. Second down and four as the Hawks got six on first down. Money with a late kick on the flank. And almost getting around the corner was Johnson. Pretty good play there by Victor Brown coming up from strong safety. Good job by Victor Brown. He fought off the block of J.J. Metters and got into the play, got into the containment. The fullback looked good here. Lunny pulls it out and zips it out there. Good catch by Johnson. Victor Lockett, he's a former free safety. Then they moved him to linebacker. And... That's what you have to have on that option. A bunch of people getting there once the ball is pitched. Run to the ball. First down for the Razorbacks. Into the belly of Carlton Calvin it goes. Obviously, Greg Davis, offensive coordinator, thought the fullback looked pretty good on the last play, too. They come right back with it, hand them the ball, and it's a nice game. Well, this is the streamlined version of the Arkansas fullback. Calvin goes six foot, 222. You got Oscar Gray back there, 6'2", 250. Right. Carlton might be just a little quicker hitting that hole. Second down and four. Hogs get good yardage on first down again. 6.15 to go. First quarter, no score in Little Rock. Out of the eye, Johnson, and he is cracked down hard on a tough defensive play there by Corey Stone, who backs up Shane Bonham at left tackle. Corey himself is nursing an ankle. Number 98 expects to get a lot of playing time today with Shane Bonham nursing a tender knee. Razorbacks will face a third and two as Stone and company set up. Arkansas one of two on third down so far. 44% on the year. Money keeping, pitching. Johnson got it back after fumbling, and it 
if his knee didn't touch down, he's got a first down. What a play by Johnson to get it back and then move the chains. If you're a coach here, you need nice, healthy arteries about time like this. <laughs> Johnson can't find the handle. Well, if Isaac Davis could have picked it up, 77, it would have been real trouble. <laughs> good job, good hustle by Marius. A fortunate bounce for the Razorbacks, and it's a first down. Ball just short of the 40. And again, they go to Calvin on that quick opener. Evidently, the Razorbacks feel that on that left side, against Yatkowski and Morris of Tennessee. They can pop some quick ones and get four or five yards every time. They got four that time. That Arkansas front, Pat Bra the Baker is uh, 275, but he came in at 310. Isaac Davis, you know, I mean, he can bench press the building. If he isn't playing the trumpet, they call him Big Ike, you know, and then Earl Scott, they're moving some people. They're going to call it second and a long five. Money with some misdirection. Johnson tried to cut inside, but Ben Talley was not fooled. Talley, a junior out of Griffin, Georgia, leads the volunteers in tackles with 33. Also came in with three sacks. Talley, something else. He played behind Ernest Fields for a year, and Ernest was a great linebacker, but he didn't have the physical skill that Ben Talley has. A good student of the game and uh, all the tools to be a great one. Another third and two for the Razorbacks. Trying to reach their own 49-yard line. Clock under, four minutes to go, first quarter. Money, late pitch, Johnson, first down, down to the Tennessee 46. As Philip Fulmer mentioned before the game, this is the first option team Tennessee has faced this year. Timmett may take them a little while to get some of their reads straight in this game. Little counter option, great job by Lunny. He gets the ball out, he draws the defensive player and gets the ball out just in time. I think Tennessee, Tennessee before the afternoon is going to over, is going to have to, they're going to have to go after him. Know that he's going to get smacked on every play. Pull back again, not much there. Good job of the offensive line of tripping up the ball carrier. James Wilson from left end, one of the guys to get there. And uh, let's get our first in-game update. Down on the sidelines, Bob Kessler. Yeah, Bob, they're really keeping a close eye on Barry Lunny, his shoulder. In fact, when Tennessee had the ball, they looked at the shoulder. In fact, Jason Allen even warmed up. It's a matter of how much pounding can Lunny take, and I think Tim hit it. I think Tennessee's going to start hitting him every single play. Second down, and eight on this one. How will he be able to throw? He's done nothing but kick so far. Johnson on the carry there. Coming up to get him was Raymond Austin, a true freshman out of one of the great high school programs in Oklahoma, Eisenhower in Lawton, Oklahoma. He's getting some playing time behind Victor Brown at strong safety. Lawton Ike, they call it. They produced a lot of great Division I players. Now it's third down and five for Arkansas with 2.45 to go first half. Hogs have the ground game won so far. Another handoff. And evidently, Barry Lunny is not able to throw the football very well. They tried a little opener to Calvin, and Paul Yatkowski stayed home to make the stop. That was the 12th play of the Arkansas drive, but worthy of note, on third and five, they did not throw the football. And Yatkowski played it very well. That's what they did in their last third and long situation. They ran the draw, and they went a ways. Yatkowski got a good outside rush and, and got an arm on the fullback. Doyle Preston, a beauty of a 35-yarder that pinned the Volunteers first time. Sean Summers, the deep return man. This is a spiral that the wind hangs up. Can he do it again? No. That ball should have been downed outside the goal line, but the Razorbacks made a mistake there. Ball was carried right into the end zone. It appeared by Stephen Conley, number 94. Volunteers get it back. 149, scoreless, first quarter. Great traditional Southern rivalry next Saturday. Pretty good one here, though. A couple of neighboring states get together. And the Razorbacks giving the Volunteers all they want so far. No score, 149 to go, first quarter. 
Pete Schuler to Charlie Garner angling off the left side. Looked like Curtis Thomas from defensive tackle was one of the first to wrap up the ball carrier. Got a little help from Gino Bell. And both these teams have a, I think, a little of an emotional advantage. Tennessee is not going to take Arkansas for granted because of what happened last year to them. And then Arkansas remembers the good things that happened against Tennessee last year, feeling that they can do it again. Second down and six. Schuler to throw up the left side. And it is Corey Fleming for the first down out at the 37-yard line. Fleming's second catch of the day, his 20th of the season. Let's watch Henry Ford here. Now, Henry's got 10 sacks and the best pass rusher in this Arkansas front working against Jason Lehman, who Steve Marshall said the, def the offensive line coach of Tennessee was developing into a fine, fine player. Kevin Mays gave a little help from left guard to keep Ford out of that garage. Right. First and 10 at the 37. Garner wiggling his way. About six yards on that carry. Didn't have much of anything there, but he kept turning those shoulders and turned it into a pretty good gain. Charlie averaging seven yards a carry coming into this game, and he had a career-long 54 on one carry against Duke last week when Tennessee hammered the Blue Devils 52-19 on homecoming. Five carries, 16 yards for Charlie. Second down and four. He's got the outside pitch, but the Razorbacks are all over it. A gain of maybe a yard. Dean Peavy was out there to block things up, and that gave the pursuit. Willie Johnson, number 40, time to get out there. Tennessee running where Tyrone Chapman would have been. They're testing Willie Johnson out there. He does an excellent job. Alfred Jackson staying at home, forcing it to the inside. Well played defensively. Tennessee's second, third down play of the day. First one was deep in their own territory, and he, Schuler can't hear. He will call a... Well, no, that's the end of the first quarter. So the Razorback fans roar through 15 scoreless minutes, and there is no score in Little Rock. No score, first quarter finished in Little Rock. Let's have a look at our Lee Apparel first quarter statistics. It'll show that Arkansas has been good on the ground, but Barry Lunny hasn't been able to throw the football very much. Just one yard on a pass to Kirk Botkin has been it. But the Hogs have run well. Charlie Garner has run well for Tennessee so far. And for Arkansas, Tim, to be tied at the end of the first quarter is a big victory. Razorbacks have been outscored 32-3 to in the first quarter this year. And Tennessee has outscored its opponents 47 to 10. So the Hogs are in a good position. It's like sleepless in the first half for Arkansas when it comes to uh, yeah. scoring. They scored over half their points in the fourth quarter. They're down in two for Tennessee. Now Schuler will change the play at the line of scrimmage. Can anybody hear him? First man through. Looks like they're short unless the officials let the play continue. That was a, a quick stop by the Razorbacks. And then maybe the surge got Tennessee going. Mose Phillips, the fullback, on the carry. We'll see where they spot it. And according to where the official is standing, the volunteers have made it. You're exactly right. The Razorbacks had it stuffed at the line of scrimmage, but an excellent job of running by Mose Phillips. And some pushing by the right side of that Tennessee line, Smith and Ratliff. Pushing away, pushing away, pushing away, and he just keeps right on moving. Like Charlie Garner gets in there and helps out. Yeah, give an assist to Charlie on that carry. Looked like a rugby scrum for a first down. Rushed out. Up the middle. And he's got a man. And the ball has broken down inside the 25-yard line. 
And it was Craig Buckner on the reception, good for 27 yards. He's averaging 18 per catch. Schumer comes out of there looking for Fleming on the corner route. See Fleming running a corner at the top of your screen, comes back across the field, and there, there's Faulkner. And this young man is just an extremely intelligent receiver with deceptive speed. First down at the Arkansas 21. Schuler to corner. Big ball up the middle. And he's down near the five. That was a similar play to what they ran at the other end of the field when Garner fumbled. But he held on this time, and the hole was just as big. Fumble is a rare thing from Charlie Garner. Great position there by Radcliffe on the back side. Get a little bit of over-pursuit on the strong side of that formation, and Garner blasts down there. Orlando Waters keeps him out of the end zone. I love the way this guy runs. You know, he looks like he's running with his trunk open because he's got the, the flapping thing on his back. Just runs with tremendous intensity. They like to call it the orange zone but only in Knoxville. They've been great in scoring situations and getting down near the goal line and almost scoring was Moe Phillips. Marcus Adair from right end on the stop. Moe's is a fine, fine runner. You know, he has showed some power in this game, showed some elusiveness previously as we watched him in his career, and he's got great hands. So it's, he's a really, really multi-dimensional at the fullback spot. Three tight ends. Phillips, Garner behind him in the backfield. Schuler will go it alone and he will score. Heath Schuler with his first rushing touchdown of the year. And the Volunteers are on the scoreboard two minutes and one second into the second quarter. Those volunteers push off there. Mays on the left, 67, and that's where he goes. Not quite enough depth of penetration by the defensive line. Up a little high, and they got slid back a smudge, and that's all they needed for a score. Here's Bexford looking for his 90th consecutive point after. That's fourth best in SEC history. A nine-play, 80-yard drive, and the volunteers lead the Razorbacks by seven. Back in Little Rock, the Tennessee Volunteers have jumped on top of the Razorbacks, seven to nothing. Arkansas, of course, trying to break a four-game losing streak here in Little Rock. Danny Ford encouraged the Razorback fans to come out early. They had a pep rally here before the game as the team came in. Danny Ford's hoping his team can play better at home. You know, I thank goodness the people. Uh, we're trying to get some enthusiasm popped in this football program. And they were great coming in. Uh, some of the guys said uh, in the dressing room said, well, if you can't get ready to play now, you never will. And that's been a problem of us getting ready to play down here in the last four ball games. So Danny Ford's team's got a battle back today as they're trailing Tennessee early in the second quarter. Might have been different, Bob, had Orlando Waters not fumbled that punt. They would have had great field position after Tennessee had to start in the shadow of its own goalposts. Now, Two possessions later, the Vols have scored to make it 7-0. But what Danny Ford, of course, is trying to get across to his team is, you know, this, this, this is a long way from over, man. I mean, we were farther behind than this last year at this time. 7 nothing at this point, nothing. That's not a problem. Well, it is breezy out there today. John Bexford has the ball blow off the tee on him. Well, okay, more than breezy. This is not that high of a stadium. War Memorial Stadium has maybe 20, 25 rows before you reach up to the top. Not one of those towering structures, and so the wind will get down in here and be a factor in this game. Bexford against that wind, angles it to the far sideline. Carl Kidd pulls it down, looks for room in the middle, and he'll stumble right near the 20 yard line. They're calling it the game of the century. There's been a lot of those the last couple of years. Right, right. It's been a this short century. <laughs> but Florida State looks great against Miami at home, 21-7. And from the ACC, North Carolina trying to bounce back, leading Wake 17-3 second quarter. And for all the latest scores in college football that you're after, call our Jefferson Pilots score line at 1-900-267-5757, a dollar a minute. And you youngsters, make sure you get your parents' permission. 
great response to our score line last week. First down, Money swings it out to the right side. Dexter Hebert couldn't handle it. By the way, one other SEC game in progress right now. Not a conference game, but George is at home against Southern Miss, and they are scoreless early in Athens. Dexter couldn't handle it, but George reminded him of what's going to happen if he does. This is George Kidd out here, number 42. He's a former tailback. Whack. They couldn't quite stop his momentum before he got the Dexter, the true freshman. Yeah, that's what they all say. Second and ten. When you get hold for Hebert, who had 51 yards on nine carries at Georgia last week. A true freshman out of Kelly High School in Beaumont, Texas. George Kidd tracks him again. Good block there. Holding out Wilson. Now, Hebert turns upfield, and there's George Kidd again. Good job by Kidd. Now it's third and five quickly for the Razorbacks. Good protection. Money sits in there, and he's got Kirk Botkin on the far sideline for a first down. Botkin with his second catch of the day, the 78th of his career, number eight on the all-time Arkansas list. First down, Arkansas. 77, 78, as you pointed out, career catches for Botkin, and as Danny Ford said before, he's never had anybody play for him that can block and catch as well as Kirk Botkin. That, that young man, can he can find the opening in there. And that was a typical play. He averages 9.3 per reception. That one covered nine for the first down. Quick opener, Oscar Gray, and a flag in the backfield. Oscar might have moved a little too early in anticipating his first carry of the day. No, we can't hear him, but you can see it's illegal motion. South Carolina, by the way, is at home against East Carolina today. And that one is scoreless in the first quarter. The other SEC team besides Georgia and these two currently play. I think uh, Rakoff needs to win that one today against Southern Miss. After the Razorbacks surprised everybody in Athens a week ago. Coaching is a, uh, it's a, an emotionally strenuous place to earn a living. It's tough. And Danny Ford knows that. Tremendously successful at Clemson. Trying to establish those same attitudes here in in Arkansas. And Phil Fulmer, of course, uh, doing very well at Tennessee. Long time for his chance. Oh, there goes Oscar. 6'2", 250. And he was moving that time. He had a lot of room to get up some momentum. Oscar's got good hands, too. He can catch the ball. And a fine job downfield of blocking. That was Hebert. Number 35 leading the way for the big fullback. Getting George Kidd on the ground and finally Parker making the stop. Oscar Gray. Mm. He's a load. Out of Smiley High School in Houston, a junior. Second down and three. They got 12 back on first down. Not much there, though. Looks like James Wilson, the left end, was there. Paul Yatkowski, the right tackle. Number 99 getting up. He helped stuff that play. Shane Bonham at left tackle also in. Third down and two. This Tennessee defense is fourth in total defense in the SEC. Third versus the Russian. Eighth against the pass. You see Shane Bonham there, the youngster from Fairbanks, Alaska. This is a summer day to him. Yeah, he's got sunlight. Third down and two. Money. We'll keep it. First down. Tennessee 40-yard line before he's upended. Ben Talley missed him at the line of scrimmage. Ronald Davis flipped him over in the secondary. They miss him at the line of scrimmage. Talley misses him at the line of scrimmage, and he fakes the pitch, and... Finally gets dumped by Ronald Davis. A good job here. Tally's got to put his face mask right in his chest. That's how they coach that one. Punish the quarterback. Make him think about it. Lunny escaped underneath him, and then a nice run. 
He's been under a lot of pressure, too, here these last few few weeks uh, until the Georgia game because that offense against Alabama and Memphis State had, had been far less than anything close to productive. 17 yards on that first down. Money wants to throw. Left side, man open, and he's got Oscar Gray. with his 11th reception of the year. And that sideline was shaken as he was rumbling over there. Botkin released inside, drove off Parker. Ventali is running with Oscar Gray, trying to, trying to make up ground. And because he was trying to make up ground, Tim, Ventali never looked for the football. It came right in over his shoulder to the fullback. Exactly. First down at the 18, Razorbacks 39 yards on the last two plays. And that one snuffed out pretty well by Corey Stone. Oscar Gray on the carry. But that's how that uh, if you're if you're not with your man, I mean, if you're not in the area, the idea is you want to concentrate on getting there. And uh, that's what Tally was trying to do. And, and Lonnie zipped that one in there. As time goes on, as he relaxes a little bit more, he'll put a little bit more altitude on that ball, and that could have been a touchdown. Razorbacks okay in the red zone this year. Most of that comes in the fourth quarter. Lonnie tried to pitch, and he was being bear-hugged at the time by Shane Burton. And Burton that backs up James Wilson on the left side, a sophomore. And that's the correct way to play it. Good job. Either just take him out right now, just pow, punish him. That time, Shane Burton just wrapped him up, and didn't permit him to release the football. Lunny's going to try to get rid of it, but Burton kind of jams it back into his chest. Give yeah. a little squeeze. Yeah, Barry was very fortunate to keep the ball with Burton making the outstanding play. Now it's third and 15 for Arkansas. Lunny looks right side. He's got a man. He got one foot in. Nice touch on this ball by Barry Lunny. Good coverage by Tennessee. Not much room to slip it in. And he gets one foot down. Firmly in bounds. Great Victor, throw. Victor Brown chases him out of bounds. 80th career catch for Tracy Caldwell. A huge one. And the Razorbacks are in uh, touchdown position. They split the backs. Hebert, a little gamble by the free safety Jason Parker and it paid off big time Parker a sophomore former All-American free safety and option quarterback out of Garland Texas a Dallas suburb and Luddy wants to stop things and talk it over with 815 to go in the first half Clinton has to dress now when he comes to a Razorback game so that nobody will recognize him. So you have more courage than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's seen the Razorbacks play a lot here in Little Rock. Well, our game from War Memorial Stadium today brought to you in part by your local Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Second down and six. Win play resumes. Long drive for the Razorbacks and Danny Ford. He needs to put this one in. 8.15 to go. First half. Two tight ends. Twelfth play of the drive. Oscar Gray shifting to the other side. Jaeger a shift. Lunny in trouble. Uses his speed to escape and throws it low incomplete. That is exactly the pass he hit against South Carolina for a touchdown. They had the, the wingman open originally for a moment. You see him run into the corner. Let it go now. But, aha, 
Horace Morris is in his face. <laughs> he can't let it go. Tries to throw it back underneath. But Gray was just not open, and Ronald Davis couldn't hold on. Tim, this might be a pass better off thrown over the top of the end zone and out of bounds. Right. Tried to force it, but he did throw it low. Third and goal from the six. Touchdown, Gray! Hard to believe a guy 250 could be that wide open. Somebody had to see him. But Barry Luddy zipped it to Oscar, and the Razorbacks are on the board. It's just a mental error here. Nobody was going with Gray. Wasn't a matter of a lack of coverage. Nobody went with him. So somebody made a mistake. And Oscar Gray hangs on for six. Good job by Lunny finding him. Lance Ellison for the point after. Out of the hold by Jason Allen. The Kirk Botkin snap. And the Razorbacks have tied it. 8.03 to go. Second quarter. Let's watch this touchdown again. You see number seven for Tennessee, Jason Parker, Duran Jenkins. And they both get locked in on the same Arkansas back. And now here comes Oscar Gray. About to make his first touchdown reception of the year. Good job by Barry Lunny. Find the open man. 80-yard drive that covered 12 plays, almost five minutes, capped by the six-yard touchdown pass. And the Razorbacks have drawn back even on a good-looking day in Little Rock. They've been outscored by their opponents 34-16 in the second quarter this year. And a big drive for them, Bob, emotionally. Tennessee had uh, taken it right down the field, 80 yards in nine plays previously. And so they come back and they say, hey, we're not through, volunteers. You're going to have a whole weekend. You're going to have a whole game full of action here. Was teed up by Dean Peavy. They may have to keep doing that. Lance Ellison put that one halfway to Texarkana. And the Volunteers will take over at their own 20 with 8.03 to go before halftime. Well, this is turning into quite an SEC rivalry, isn't it? states that had only met in football three times in 85 years until last season. James Little Man Stewart is in the backfield for Tennessee. He's got the ball from Heath Schuler. Oh, what a play by big number 90 of Arkansas. Junior Soli fought off a blocker and then tripped up the ball carrier. Great movement to the ball by Soli. And Joe Kynes is a defensive coordinator here at Arkansas as we watch this again. And his team's going to move around a lot. Keith Schuler can't get too caught up in trying to change plays to match up here to Arkansas's defense because they're not going to line up in what they're going to end up in. Loss of a yard in the play. Schuler out to the left side, and he's got Corey Fleming at the Arkansas bench, the 45-yard line. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Lewis Campbell, the secondary coach, had to have a heart attack on this one. They're trying to get Tracy Cantlope some work at left corner. He was sucked way inside. There's nobody close to him. Look it. If Fleming would have just kept running, there was no one there. By golly. Finally, Carl Kidd had to come over from free safety to force the runner out. Peavy is back in the game again at right corner, of course. Schuler six for six, 93 yards through the air. Here comes a reverse. They fake it to Billy Williams, and there it goes long up the far side for Faulkner. He's got it at the two. <laughs> just a moment when they saw Billy Williams coming around on the reverse. When this, when
when you see this happening as a defensive back, just turn around and run. Especially when the, you know, you've got Batman throwing the ball, Superman putting it out there. My golly, I mean, Waters probably thought he was as deep as he had to be. Faulkner knew better. He knew that Schuler could get it downfield. Big play for Tennessee. First and goal for the balls. was in the end zone before the ball shook loose. And the Volunteers answer the Arkansas score in a hurry with an 80-play, excuse me, 80-yard, five-play drive. Brunson leaving the way there, leading the way. Vernon Wade comes in, gets a good shot. Looked like he made it in on his first surge. Now that's 91 straight for John Bexford. And with 6.50 to go in the first half, the Volunteers have shocked the Razorback crowd and Danny Ford, leading by seven. Things always a little interesting down at the goal line when the ball pops loose. Was he in? Was James Stewart not in? The last time they were down here, Garner had a hard time holding on to it. Now James Stewart making his leap spins off and now they say he's in there Alfred Jackson whacks him and the ball comes out recovered by Ireland or it's right in the middle of those Razorbacks there so that's I think you'd call that a break for Tennessee that was a close close call Balls lead 14-7 Seven. Then the Volunteers cover well. There wasn't much form over on that short side. And the Razorbacks will have it at about their own 21-yard line after a 14-yard return. Philip Fulmer's wondering, who do, who do I put in when we get down there around the goal line? If I had somebody that could hold on to the ball, what's going on? Don't you guys know how important this is? And we do stand corrected. Not a five, but a four-play 80-yard drive. Took only a minute 13, and the Vols are right back on top. Money keeping on first down. And some yardage off the right side. Reggie Ingram from middle linebacker, the outstanding senior out of Whitehaven High School in Memphis on the stop. Clock is under six and a half to go before halftime. And coming up at halftime, Bob Kessling will have our usual look at the week in the SEC. Features, statistics, and more. And we'll also have a look at first-half highlights. Most of them have been here in the second quarter. On second and six, Carlton Calvin. Over the 30-yard line, he's near a first down. Has to get right to the 31. Reggie Ingram and Victor Brown on the tackles. And Ingram is quite a linebacker, tackle to tackle. Yeah, his range may not be what you want it to be in terms of pass defense, but as, as far as a leader goes, the man that keeps these guys into the game and makes the right calls for Tennessee, not going to find a better one than the man out of Memphis, Tennessee, Reggie Ingram. They appear to be short, less than the length of a ball. A five-yard gain for Calvin. That'll set third up third and one. one. Razorbacks do not want to give up the football here. They get a couple of first downs. Even if they don't score, they can keep the ball the rest of the second quarter. They do not want Tennessee to have it back. Dr. John Pinker. Tennessee appears to be getting better and better on offense each week as they develop. It's going to be quite a battle next week as they take on Alabama. Yeah, I made the mistake of asking Phillip about that game yesterday. What did he say? We're not thinking about the uh, Crimson Tide. I knew that was the answer I would get, but I asked anyway. And there's Luddy off the right side. He appears to be to the 31. There are some conferences when you can look ahead. 
not the SEC. Bob Kessling on the sideline. One thing to watch is the Tennessee defensive front. They've already played eight down linemen in this game. Tennessee, if you remember, in their four wins have all been pretty lopsided. They've had a chance to play a lot of players. The problem is they haven't really been tested up front in a big game except Florida. So look at all the backup players today and how many are getting in here early to get their feet wet for what they think is going to be a tough fourth quarter. Yeah, we've seen Corey Stone, Shane Burton with playing time up front. Money, lots of time. the attended receiver and Ronald Davis bumped him. <laughs> you wing it down there you never know what's going to happen. Cotto Cotton making his move over the middle. Ronald Davis right with him. Stride for stride. Lunny throws it up there and there's a collision. There's a collision there but from a defensive standpoint Here we say go. Ronald Davis was going for the ball. Now the I got my rights, too, as a defensive guy, right? Yeah. But, you know, I look at that replay, and I'm thinking to myself, even Foley has to admit, that's pass interference. No, that's no. no. <laughs> Ronald, good job, Ronald. Okay, now, whose ball is it? It's anybody's ball. Ronald Davis is going to go up there and try to catch it with one hand, slapping at it like that. <laughs> like I've said earlier, if the receiver's conscious, no penalty in the Tim Foley book of coverage. First so, down at the 46. <laughs> that's the last thing I told those officials. No passer. <laughs> <laughs> haven't seen Marius Johnson carry the ball in a while. That was him off the left side. So the clock runs with under 4.50 to go in the first half. Arkansas and Tennessee have both been good on first down. Balls have just been better. Second and eight. Razorbacks have averaged six yards on first down. The Vols have doubled that. Only two that time. It'll be second and eight. Bunny looks at the defender and tosses to Johnson. Oh, what a great open field play there. Victor Brown from strong safety with his fifth stop of the day. And that's at least two that he's had that have been nothing but open field one-on-one. -on -one. You see, Tennessee is coming on that play. There's man-to-man -man coverage, and Victor Brown moving to the outside instinctively to stay with Marius Johnson. Now, Victor had to back up J.J. McCleskey last year, and now he's getting his chance as a senior. Came in number two in tackles in the Vols, 26 tackles, and he has five more today. Third down and five. The Razorbacks five of nine on third down today. Running out to the right flat. And the ball bounces off the hip of Oscar Gray. Out there on the coverage was George Kidd. And the Razorbacks will kick it away with 3.38 to go. That'll make the fans down in the southeast corner of the stadium happy. A lot of orange down there. Tennessee was allotted 8,000 tickets for this game and sold every one of them. Sean Summers, the return man. Doyle Preston, a 39-yard average on the year. This is a boomer. Way out of here. They get 51 yards on that one. I'll make it 49. It was at the Tennessee 49, not the Arkansas 49. So the Volunteers get it back with 3.30 to go before halftime, leading by seven. The announcers for this game, selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference at Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Bob Carpenter, Tim Foley, Bob Kessling, War Memorial Stadium, Little Rock. Volunteers 14-7 over the Razorbacks. James, the little man, Stewart on first down. I think it's safe to say that three minutes is enough time for Tennessee to get on the board again. Well, I guess so. There are two touchdown drives today, three minutes and 50 seconds over 80 yards, and the next one, a minute 13 over 80 yards. This is such an explosive team. They do so well, and as long as you've got a, a man like Heath Shuler making decisions, he's not going to put the ball at risk. 
The idea is keep driving, keep moving, keep letting that offense produce. Three wide receivers fought near the crossing pattern, and he couldn't hold on. Alfred Jackson, the strong safety, on the coverage, and that is Heath Schuler's first incompletion of the day, coming 248 before halftime. He's now 7 of 8 for 146 yards. Good coverage by Jackson. Also had a little help from Darwin Ireland falling off back in there and trying to get into the action. Third down and six. Draw play. No way! Shannon Wright from middle linebacker with a big play. And the Razorbacks will get the ball back. Good job by Shannon Wright. He came in here as a true freshman and was very successful. And then he had a he had a problem, a personal problem with, the, with alcohol and had to leave school for a while. And now he's back. And it's good to see someone fight his way back from that situation. Shannon Wright is a real positive force now on this football team. Waters and Kidd back to receive the kick of Tom Hutton. A left-footed spiral that gets some good distance. Oh, and they let it hit. They let the ball hit at the 40, and it's all the way down around the 26 of Tennessee. Arkansas, not a very good job on punt returns today. One fumble, and then that one falls untouched and gains about 14 more Hunter yards on the bounce. A 54-yard kick. Confidence is a fragile thing. Orlando Waters had dropped the last punt he tried to field and that was a that was a catchable ball might have had a little problem with the glare from the sun but uh, you know Orlando being the player that he is should have been under that one and catch it first down at the 26 Lunny will give it to Gray a couple of yards off the left side speaking of the sun some of our stations at this time of the year experience video and audio problems due to satellite interference. We ask that you not contact your local station. The problem will correct itself shortly. We're in the state capital of Arkansas. War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. A minute and a half to go in the first half. Razorbacks second down and eight. Lunny left sideline and the ball is caught. J.J. Metters. Yeah, you can tell by that strut he had it. <laughs> J.J.'s got some speed. He's a state champion in uh, every race they ran in Louisiana. 55 meters, 100 meters, 200 meters, and that time he breaks it off in front of Ronald Davis and does make a nice catch. Okay. <laughs> He's styling out of Ruston, Louisiana. He had kickoff returns in high school of 90 and 96 yards. Looks like the Razorbacks have spent their second time out with a minute 14 to go. And J.J.'s just made his 13th catch of the year. Well, this week, our nationwide SEC scholar-athlete is Lars Sumberg of Tennessee. The junior accounting major, a perfect 4-0 grade point average. He won the 92 SEC Outdoor Javelin title with a distance of 239.2 feet. Lars Sumberg, our nationwide SEC scholar-athlete of the week. Tim Foley, we talked earlier how crazy Arkansas had been the last couple of weeks after a 2-0 start, blown out at Bama, shut out at home, and then an upset winner at Athens. What about their performance so far today through nearly the entire first half? Well, I think they have to feel good about what they've accomplished so far. Offensively, they're looking very competitive. We saw them look fairly inept against Alabama. Today, they're playing solid. First down at the 41, Lunny. Gray wasn't going far anyway. That's a play when you might have gained a yard or two. You might be better off with the incompletion and the clock stopped. Yeah. As long as Reggie Ingram's there, there's going to be somebody pedaling around that short middle area. Reggie probably isn't going to get 20 yards down the field. Good job. Second down 10 with a minute nine to go. Razorbacks would love to have that tying score before halftime. 
want to make sure they keep the football and at least keep it a seven-point game. Kurt Butkin has it! A beautiful throw right down the middle and down to the Tennessee 36. Botkin's third catch of the day. And if I'm Barry Lunny, when I have to have it, this is the guy I'm going to look for. He's got four wor years' worth of experience, and he can read the coverage, and he can find the open area. My goodness, three or four people right there as Parker takes him down. Buck runs again after they move the chains. Lunny out to the left side. Johnson, get out of bounds, they say. And he does. He thought about cutting it inside, and everybody on the near sideline said, get your helmet out of bounds now. <laughs> that time they doubled. T Look at Botkin coming on the left of your screen there. They've got three guys looking at him. Lunny nails Johnson on the sideline, and he does do a good job. They try to keep him from doing it. Ronald Davis tries to hang on to him, but he fights his way out there, Mar Marius Johnson. Another good job here by the Arkansas offense. Greg Davis has to be proud of the way his guys are playing. He can do some things on second and one. He'll do the drop play to Gray. First down, down to the Tennessee 24-yard line. Reggie Ingram ever so busy in the middle on the tackle. They will stop the clock as the chains will move. Or has Arkansas called a timeout? Yeah, Arkansas has called for a timeout. Gray takes it outside and cuts it back up inside where he meets Ben Talley and Reg, Reggie Ingram. So the Razorbacks out of timeouts. 40 seconds to go before halftime. All the scoring in the second quarter, a Heath Schuler one-yard run at 12.59, an Oscar Gray six-yard reception at 8.03. And then a minute 13 later, James Stewart in from two yards as Schuler moved him down the field with a big pass play to Craig Faulkner. And there you saw Rocky Felker talking to Barry Lunny there in front of Danny Ford. And Rocky, of course, the former head coach at Mississippi State. Danny Ford having his input. You know, sometimes if a Barry Lunny's been raised around football, his dad was a high school coach, and sometimes. Uh, it's good to have somebody that's knowledgeable, but you may move into the area where he thinks he knows more than he really knows. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got too many ideas of his own. <laughs> and I don't think with Danny Ford, you want to have a lot of new ideas. No. You won't come up with much that he has not seen. Right. Seventh play of this 51-yard drive. First down at the 24. Razorbacks were in the eye. Johnson goes out to the left side with Gray staying home. Money looking up the middle, and that ball is intercepted inside the five by Jason Parker. His third pick of the year. Kurt Botkin, the intended receiver, but the Volunteers had him triple team. They put the tail back in motion to try to get man-to-man -man coverage on Botkin. Jason Parker, a very aware player, obviously. Wasn't going anywhere. He stayed in the middle of the field, played, played it well. The ball drifted downfield, and he makes the play on a nice job. They tried to get one-on-one -on -one coverage by spreading out the Tennessee defense. Parker's third this year, seventh of his career, and he's only a sophomore. Schuler will kneel on it. Razorbacks cannot stop the clock. So the first half should come to an end with a uh, disappointed but not frustrated Arkansas team trailing by seven. On that throw there, you just have to make sure where the free safety is. If the free safety doesn't work to the strong side, then then you're not gonna you're not gonna get that little lob in over the top. Those are Arkansas fans cheering. They are very happy with the way their team has battled against the number 11 team in the nation through the first 30 minutes. Let's get down to the sidelines and Bob Kessler. That's a tough game in the first half. We knew it would be. They're a good football team, and we've got to get the ball back more for our offense because we've done fairly well, wasted one opportunity early, but we'll get it correct. We played a lot of folks on defense. You expect a tough second half, I Absolutely. guess. Absolutely. It's, it's not going to change. We're going to have to play our best to win. Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. Coach Philip Fulmer, the Volunteers, his team goes to the locker room, leading here at halftime, 14-7. to 7. Back with our halftime activities from Little Rock in just a moment. 
Razorbacks are back on the field here at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas. A very close ball game, 14 to 7 at the half. Bob Carpenter back upstairs with Tim Foley. It's going to be a tough second half, folks. He's got the leather on, ready to strap it on here. Tim, what, what are your impressions of the ball game now halfway through? Well, I think if you're Arkansas, you got to feel good about where you are right now. You've You've controlled the ball for almost 19 minutes of the first half, so your plan is working. Tennessee hasn't had the ball that much, but when they have it, <laughs> they're scoring in a hurry. So if Arkansas can just stay close, and they're, of course, mm -hmm. playing the upset role here. If they can just stay close till the fourth quarter, they've been successful so far this year in the fourth quarter scoring points. Quick strike capability certainly has been a big part of the Tennessee game plan today. Heath Schuler, a one-yard run, his first rushing touchdown of the year. That came early in the second quarter. And then Barry Lunny found his man, Oscar Gray, for six. And the Razorbacks tied it up. But this right now is the play of the day so far. Heath Schuler to Craig Faulkner for 53 yards. Faulkner loses it momentarily in the sun and makes the catch. Big play. And then just a play or two later, James Little Man Stewart in from two yards out. 6.50 to go before halftime. And the Volunteers cap an 80-yard, one minute 13 second drive by going up 14-7. A look at our RICO halftime stat shows Arkansas has more first downs, more yardage on the ground, but Heath Schuler has been outstanding. He's seven of eight for those 160 yards. Home team, a key thing for them, Tim, has been time of possession. Razorbacks have done a good job of keeping it away from the Volunteers today. Yeah, they have, and that's got to continue. Barry Lunny has made some good decisions. He's handled the ball carefully. The ball has been on the ground a couple of times on pitches, but fortunately for Arkansas, it's popped back up to the runner. So he, he's got to feel good about the way he's played thus far this afternoon. With one exception, I know he would like to have that pass right at the end of the first half back. That was one that shouldn't have been thrown, the one that Jason Parker picked off. Philip Fulmer, 8-1 as the head coach of Tennessee after his 4-0 last year. When he came on late with a win over Florida after the early wins over Southwest Louisiana and Georgia. Florida, the other early one, and then, of course, Boston College in the Hall of Fame Bowl. He has his team ranked number 11 in the nation. Alabama in Birmingham coming up next week for the Vols. But they've got 30 tough minutes of football ahead here in Little Rock before they can even start thinking about the Crimson Tide. Lance Ellison will kick it off. You remember, Tennessee won the toss in the first half and deferred, so they get the football. Charlie Garner on the return and out over the 25-yard line before Anthony Hicks, a strong safety on special teams, knocked him down. The ball is at the 28-yard line. You know, Phil Fulmer's mentor, Johnny Majors, uh, taking on Notre Dame today. Oh, boy. So he has the head coach of Pittsburgh. Fulmer has a different style than John does, both both extremely knowledgeable football men, but Phil is, uh, you can say Phil is a little bit calmer. Johnny's record, one and three up at Pitt after he won his first game. Heath Schuler rolling out to the left, up top, and he overthrew his man. That would have been a touchdown for Craig Faulkner. <laughs> that is one of the few times you'll ever see Heath Schuler miss a wide open man. And, and he was wide open. He got jammed as he went out into the flat, and then as he turned it upfield, nobody went with him. You can see him running in the open, back behind the coverage. Schuler puts a little bit too much of a line on it. You no. <laughs> well, see, most guys would be jumping up and down. There's, there's the reaction of a guy that knows he's good and it won't happen again. Well, he's got three wide receivers this time. He'll look right side toward the sidelines. He threw it away up over the top of Corey Fleming. Good job that time by the Arkansas secondary. With the play action, they stayed in a rotation to Fleming. Waters had jammed him. He had deep help. Schuler had completed that pass early in the first half. But it was not there this time. It wasn't there. So he just fires it away. He reloads and fires it away. Third down and ten. Five wide receivers. 
Schuler with time over the middle, and he's got Nilo Sylvan. There's a penalty flag down, and one of the five wide receivers was doing a little inching as the ball was snapped. That was an interesting look. I'm not sure if that was Philip Philip Fulmer's look or if, <laughs> or if one of those guys lined up in the wrong place. But they were kind of squinching around right as the ball was snapped, and that's what the official called. Only the second penalty of the day against the Volunteers. They rushed for 100 yards on the ground in the first half and have come out winging on the first three plays in the second. Third down again. It'll be third and 15 this time. There you see the four wide receivers to one side. He's looking up the middle, and it's Nilo Silva again. Del Delco right there to meet him, but a great throw by Schuler and a Tennessee first down out to the 45-yard line. Henry Ford had Schuler on his back in the secondary. There you see the three of them together. Okay, let's split up, boys. And there they go. Sylvan, he finds Sylvan down the middle. Nice catch by Sylvan. Good stick by Delco. Now watch Schuler. Henry Ford's going after him, and he goes down. Fourth catch of the year by Nilo Sylvan. It was good for 22 yards. First down at the 45. Schuler, they're coming, and he throws it and completes it. And a quick hit on Billy Williams by Dean Peavy. But Schuler did a good job to unload it. And uh, they're having a few words back in that Tennessee backfield. Some of the offensive linemen don't like the way the Razorbacks pinned those ears back and started coming after Schuler. Schuler sees it coming. You see Wright gets the contact, but Schuler gets it off. And this is a well-drilled team. And you've got a very knowledgeable guy getting the snap from center. He can see those things coming, and he knows where to go with the ball. Second down and four at the 49 of Arkansas. Charlie Garner the call. And nothing there because Marcus Adair was there from the razor end position, they call it. Former All-American out of East High School in Memphis who went to Air Force originally, was a WAC newcomer of the year for the Falcons two years ago, redshirted last year, and here he is starting for the Razorbacks. Four sacks as well. He's a pilot, too. Well, you got to be to go there. You got to be able to fit in the cockpit to go to Colorado Springs. They can't recruit huge players there. Pete Schuler out to the right flat, and it's out of the hands of Mose Phillips. Orlando Waters with corner coverage. And the Volunteers will have to kick it two minutes and 17 seconds into the third quarter. First up, Philip Fulmer, the former offensive line coach. When those guys come off the field, they're always the first ones he's looking for. Now, he produced some good ones, too. He had nine All-SEC players, four All-Americans, and he brought in Steve Marshall to tutor the offensive line, of course. Great coach. See what the Razorbacks do with this punt return. Now that is a high kick. Anybody who tries to catch that's crazy. And it will bounce dead at the Arkansas 7, maybe the 8-yard line. Hung way up there by Tom Hutton and the Razorbacks, down by 7, have it back. Back in Little Rock, Tennessee leads 14-7. to seven. The Volunteers put their five wideouts in. That was one of Danny Ford's big concern, Tennessee speed. So Arkansas's defense trying to make adjustments to that speed right now and making sure Tennessee didn't get the big play against them. We don't run as well as they do. I told our, our young players this morning after breakfast, just try to keep them in front of them. Let's just please keep them in front of them and take good angles because if we if we mess up on an angle or, or pursuit angle or something like that, they'll run by us. So we got to keep everything in front and tackle up and tackle well and try to strip the ball from them. Greg Faulkner has gotten behind the Razorbacks twice today, once for a 53-yard play to set up a touchdown, once on first down in this quarter that could have been a touchdown. First down at the eight. Razorbacks way back there after a 41-yard kick. Volunteers showing some blitz. Fumble ball on the carpet. And it looks like Ben Talley has it for Tennessee. Reggie Ingram, the hit to knock 
kept the ball loose from Marius Johnson. Well, both sets of running backs, running backs on both teams having a hard time hanging on to the football. Good job by Reggie Ingram. And Ben Talley to pick it up. First fumble recovery of the year. These are the kind of mistakes that kill you against good football teams. Schuler, play action, right side, and a touchdown! Craig Faulkner, right over the hands of Orlando Waters. And Faulkner with his fifth touchdown catch of the year. It came on first down, an 11-yard play. Little play action here. You see Brunson set up to help Schuler roll out. Waters goes up, probably tips the ball momentarily, almost made the catch, but Schuler drops in over the top. And that's 92 in a row now for John Bexford. And only 2.45 into the second half. Tennessee now leads it 21-17. Faulkner had a TD catch in the first play from scrimmage versus Duke. And, boy, that's just on the money. Faulkner is very aware of where he is on the football field all the time, drops down, makes a catch. And I said 21-17. Of course, it is 21-7 Tennessee. And Schuler has tied the all-time Tennessee single-season touchdown pass mark of Dewey Warren, set back in 1966 with his 18th of the year. His 29th career, he's got a little ways to catch Andy Kelly, who threw 36 between 88 and 91. David Cutcliffe has done an excellent job training this young man to react intelligently. You know, in practice, they run little drills. He tosses them the ball, and then Schuler's got to throw it to the right guy. David will tell him, middle linebacker's blitzing. Where do you go? That's got to become more than just knowing what to do. It's got to become just a reaction. You don't have to think about where to go. You just go there. At halftime, I talked to John Ward, the longtime radio voice of the Volunteers, who's seen a lot of great athletes in Knoxville. He said this is the best pure quarterback he has ever seen in a Tennessee uniform. Others might have been better athletes. Best pure QB he has ever seen. Kickoff taken by Cotto Cotton at the 10. And he'll get out of bounds up around the Arkansas 25, maybe the 26-yard line. They'll give him a 16-yard return. And now the Razorbacks have to take care of the football and try to get a scoring drive going. You know, Tim, this game has changed dramatically the last couple minutes of the first half and now here the opening minutes of the second half. Arkansas had a chance to tie the ball game, could not get it in before halftime, and then the big turnover right out of the locker room puts them down by two touchdowns. And it's tough for this type of offense to recover from that type of def deficit. But they came back against South Carolina. They came back against Georgia, so they have that spirit. First down, ball not quite to the 26. Lunny, a late pitch. And Hebert has it. He is cracked down hard. Is Reggie Ingram in on every tackle today, or is it just my imagination? He I mean, can, this guy is covering all over the place. He can get there, and remember we talked about having to, you know, hit the quarterback. He gets whacked this time. Watch Barry Lunny. And you want to, you want to try to shake up the pitch, you take down the quarterback. That's fair, and that's the game. It's a tough game, mm. and bango, then Reggie Ingram puts it on Johnson. Boy, did he. First down at the 38, into the belly of the fullback, Carlton Calvin. And he'll be right out onto the Razorback logo that starts at about the 42-yard line. There's two things that happen when you smack the quarterback like that. One, of course, it's going to shake him up a little bit. The other thing, it's going to shake up your offensive coordinator. You know, you don't want your guy getting punished in that fashion on a consistent basis, so... <coughs> Second down and five. Ball at the 43. Lunny does a 360. Pitches it to Hebert. Tripped up on the play by Jerron Jenkins, the left corner. But the Razorbacks have it very close to another first down. 
you got to come at it with different ways. Sometimes you take the quarterback with the defensive end, and sometimes you're responsible for the pitch. That time it looked like Shane Burton wasn't really quite sure of, well, he was probably sure, but he didn't do what he was supposed to do. Arkansas with his 14th first down of the day. Sometimes you try to play off that quarterback and force him to pitch it so you can chase it, and he he gives you a little flinch with the ball, and you're upfield, and he's turning it inside. Razorbacks in the eye. Lunny looking left side, a man angling in. Tracy Caldwell over the 40 of Tennessee. Just a real quick little look in from outside. Caldwell came in. Lunny looked at him in a hurry, delivered it well. Tennessee's been giving him a little room every once in a while in that slot. This time, Lunny just picks up, pops Tracy Caldwell, who is one of their most prolific receivers they've ever had here. Up over 80 career. He's number seven in the R of time Arkansas list. Kirk Botkin right behind him. And a first down at the 38. And again, Tennessee doing a great job now of stopping that fullback dive. Not much there on that play at all. Oh, yeah. Number 41 again. Corey Stone gave him a little help. Helps to have a linebacker like that when you lose starters up front like Jeff Tullis, J.J. Surlis, and All-American Todd Kelly, drafted by the 49ers. And it's also good to have the leadership qualities that, uh, that are embodied in a guy like Reggie Ingram. Second down and nine. Money to Heber. And he is into the secondary. Down to the 25. Reggie Ingram made the stop, but this time it was a tackle made from behind. Well, we saw we saw this Arkansas offense go to sleep against Alabama. It's fighting back here. You see Pat Baker trying to get a block on Reggie Ingram. He finally makes the tackle downfield. Dexter Hebert suddenly come alive. Five carries, 32 yards for the freshman. Lunny looks to the right side. Tracy Caldwell dies to make the catch. And that one will gain about seven or eight yards. Caldwell looking against Deron Jenkins. Caldwell's got a little hamstring pull, so I wouldn't expect him to go deep. Deron might kind of pump, bump up on him a little bit. Barry Lunny having a good day now, 11 of 15, averaging about 10 yards of completion. Second down and three at the Tennessee 18. Tailback keeper picks it up. And that little delay will cost him the first down. He's going to be stopped right around the line of scrimmage because he had to concentrate on getting the ball back. Danny Ford says, holy cow, we're playing well, but we got to take care of the football. And those are the little things that never show up in the box score that Danny Ford is trying to eliminate. Those, those little... Well, it's not a big mistake, but just enough to kill you. Arkansas, five of nine on third down today. This is a third and four. Fullback. Yes! Down inside the 15. Carlton Calvin. <laughs> they give it to the fullback, Calvin, upfield, and as you can see, Lenny having a hard time with that shoulder. He's in pain. First down, Arkansas at the Tennessee 12. Trying to get back to within a touchdown. Hebert straight ahead. And he's down to the eight. Reggie Ingram with his ninth tackle of the day. The tackle is made by Reggie Ingram and the change follow. Danny Ford's team mounting a drive here midway through the third quarter. They gave up a quick strike as Faulkner was hit by Schuler after a turnover. Razorbacks down by 14, but on the move here, second and six, the 11th play of this drive. Lunny looking left, pitches, Hebert outside. 
and he was knocked out of bounds as he headed for the pylon. Sean Summers on the tackle. Arkansas will be very close to a first and goal. Great job of blocking by Tracy Caldwell downfield. Carlton Calvin also out in front of it. Running through there. You see Calvin and Caldwell combine, combine on Brown, and then Sean Summers knocks the young freshman from Beaumont, Texas, out of bounds. Third down and one at the three. Arkansas with three backs and a couple of tight ends. They're running up the middle. Heeper, way up over there. That should be a first and goal for the Razorbacks down inside the one. Dexter Heber, a true freshman out of Beaumont, Texas, a two-time All-Stater. He was an All-State performer in track, and he did some serious hurdling right there. That's right. You know, previous goal line situations, they brought a tight end in motion and offset the fullback. That time they just lined up in it and went that way. Same formation. He hurt the deep man. Lunny under center. First and goal. Up over the top. Touchdown, Arkansas. Good job by Earl Scott, the center, Pat Baker, Chris Oliver, Isaac Davis on that drive. Moving those volunteers out of there. You see it right down the goal line. Contact, and he's up over the top. And the point after, a knuckling line drive, but Lance Ellison got it through. 6.42, third quarter. Razorbacks back with a touchdown. We're back after this from your local station. For the first time this year, Arkansas has scored points in the third quarter. When Tennessee scored a few minutes ago, they had been outscored 16-0 by their opponents. That indicates also their defense has been pretty good third quarter this year. They will kick it away. Charlie Garner and Billy Williams, the deep men for the Volunteers. Ellison lets it fly. This one, a good six yards into the end zone. Billy Williams says, not this time. And Tennessee will have the ball at its own 20 with 6.42 to go in the third quarter after a very impressive five and a half minutes, 74 yard, 13 play drive of the Razorbacks, capped by Dexter Hebert's one yard touchdown run. And the freshman has his second rushing touchdown of the year. Plenty of time. Up the left side. Dean Peavy defending on Corey Fleming. No flag. There's Joe Pines looking on a defensive coordinator, the man that was the interim head coach last year. And one of the fine, fine defensive minds in the country. Joe Pines spent some time in Tampa Bay, and now he's back doing what he really likes to do, this college football stuff. Arkansas going with three defensive linemen in the game. Oop, now they're putting a dare down. Second and ten, Charlie Garner. And he was spun around by Shannon Wright, the middle linebacker. This Arkansas defense would have been even better had they been able to keep hold of Kevin Kemp, who had 102 tackles for them last year, but he left the team and returned home. Some of those other guys, though, getting some experience, playing awfully well, especially considering they're without Tyrone Chapman. Third down and five. Five receivers for Heath Schuler. Look out. And he completes it to Faulkner. He gets ahead over the 35-yard line. Carl Kidd. 
was the man that finished off the play. Steve Conley had a chance at the sack. And this is what's great about Shula. They come after him. He can't get it, but he's big enough. He just muscles his way around. <laughs> Almost slips out the back door on him. I mean, Conley gets stay up high, grab him, yank him down. He's probably the strongest quarterback Conley's ever tried to tackle. First down at the 36. Little counter play, and Garner gets a yard or two. As the Razorbacks, Vernon Wade, number 93, was all over him. As, as Wade, a, a junior out of Lufkin, Texas. As a coach, you know you're taking a chance when you come after him like that. And Joe Kynes came after him with everything he had, and it worked because Conley came clean. Nobody picked him up. Those are the times when you have to make the plays. Second down and eight. Under five minutes to go. A constant roar by the War Memorial Stadium crowd here in Little Rock. Schuler, plenty of time. Up the middle. Corey Fleming in traffic with the catch. And that's inside the Arkansas 35. Well, that was just a mismatch from the word go. Great call by David Cutcliffe. They motion to, to spread formation, and they get Darwin Ireland man-to-man -man on Corey Fleming. And that's just not fair. <laughs> you know? You, gotta, you get that kind of matchup, that's something that you want to check out of because you're going to have a hard time winning. Fleming, four catches, 76 yards. That one good for 20. Schuler again, he's hot. Over the middle, same man. Down to the 16 of the Razorbacks. We are seeing why Heath Schuler is the top quarterback in the SEC and number four in the nation passing coming in. Fleming just made a great catch on the previous play. This time they're getting zone drops and the middle is wide open. Finally, Alfred Jackson reacts and brings him to the turf. These are cool customers, these Tennessee volunteers. It takes a lot to get number 21 anxious and Fleming knows where he's going all the time. First down at the 16, quick opener, most Phillips, maybe a yard, maybe a little more. Tripped up by Darwin Ireland, the weak side linebacker, the SEC Defensive Player of the Week. He almost had his number in tackles at Georgia last week. Number 16 had 13 of them at Athens. And he's number 11 on the all-time Arkansas tackle list with about 280 now. Second down and nine. Schuler looking left, a little swing to Garner. Uncatchable. Had he caught it, Shannon Wright was right there. And a great job that time by Mark Smith, number 44, the linebacker. He was running man-to-man -man with Greg Faulkner. Craig Faulkner. Smith only a redshirt freshman, former high school quarterback, so he knows about pass patterns. Yes, he does. And I'm telling you, this Tennessee receiver corps is well prepared by a guy named Kippy Brown. Used to be with the Jets. Third down and nine. Schuler rolled left, looks right. He's got Fleming, gets outside of Waters, and he tumbles close to the first down. Orlando Waters got caught well on the Tennessee side of the line of scrimmage. And had a man blow right by him. There's Kippy Brown right there. Spent uh, several years here at Tennessee as an assistant and then was in New York for the last several years. Got a son that is uh, going to Tennessee on a basketball scholarship. So he's glad to be back here. He'll be head coach one day. He understands the passing game. They've got quite a package in Tennessee. They can, they can hurt you either way. Orlando Waters scoots back up there. He avoids the block of Ratliff, but then doesn't make the tackle. See, that's what Danny Ford was talking about, keeping those guys in front of you. Orlando got caught a little bit inside. Corey Fleming having a huge day. 17 yards a catch and it'll be fourth and one get ready for the roar here ball is at the Arkansas seven Sure. Great penetration. 
penetration by the Razorbacks. Charlie Garner got that ball, and before he knew it, he was on the back of his own man, Bubba Miller. The Razorbacks surged beautifully in the middle of that line, and they will measure. This might be the biggest measurement of the season in the SEC right here. And Schuler reverse pivoted on that. And of course, that's how the play is designed, but he almost didn't get around in time to get the ball in Garner. Garner was there in a hurry. down in this part of the field and Calvin had both arms wrapped around that one let's have another look at that fourth and inches Schuler spins sticks it in there to Garner see Charlie he never his way over he never had a chance to get up in the air because he ran right into his own offensive lineman Arkansas had pushed them back great penetration there by Soli and Wade second and seven a wobbler Barry Lunny is very fortunate that wasn't picked off. And he might have gotten his shoulder racked up on that one. He had a man open momentarily, but when he was hit, this got dangerous. Little slap by our buddy Reggie Ingram. Reggie's everywhere. He had the stun gun on for that one. And it'll be third and seven. So it was not Lunny getting his shoulder hurt, but he got his head spanked a bit. And it'll be third and long for the Razorbacks at their own ten. gets a block on George Kidd, keeps him out of there. You see number 74, Straczynski jumping over the top. Good job of movement there. Don Strubing, a true freshman in playing center. What a job by Buddy King's offensive line that time. Lunny outside, J.J. Matters up to the 35-yard line. J.J. almost had a chance to display some of that speed. Lenny throws this inside the linebacker, and now Parker finally brings him down. I think that Tennessee was actually bringing the corner. He was pulled in tight and looked like he was coming. You know, we got the Sherman shake. I guess we've got the J.J. jam when he gets up. He is jamming all over the place. Here comes an end around. Metters got a block. But they were on the short side of the field out there, and there just wasn't any room to run after he got outside. And that was Horace Morris staying at home. That's a play that was effective against Tennessee earlier in the year, as Horace had a tendency to chase the play a little bit, but great job by the young man from Miami staying home. We've got a great ball game going here in Little Rock. A minute and a half, third quarter. Razorbacks down by a touchdown, second and six at their own 39. Hebert fighting to get out to the 42. There was an initial hit by James Wilson in the left end. Ben Talley in to finish off the play after Wilson and Horace Morris, the bookends, sort of collapsed the line inward. 
James Wilson really sl slashed down hard to the inside. And, and it's Chris Oliver, the senior, getting up slowly. He's their, he's their best pass blocker from Fayetteville, Arkansas, Chris Oliver. And he had, a, he had some injury problems earlier in the year. Their backup at that position is Scott Rivers, a redshirt freshman. Actually, they're going to send, it looks like they're sending Brian Cornish into the game, and Cornish has some playing experience. Yeah, at right tackle mainly, but he can play that left side. You bet. Cornish, a junior, injured earlier, but now back, and they'll need him on third and three. Money to the fullback. I don't think so. They had to get the ball out beyond the 45-yard line. And that will be well short. Now Lunny looks to the sidelines. I'm looking for Doyle Preston, and he's coming onto the field to punt the football. Now some people might feel that that's kind of a conservative call, but Tennessee was in a blitz. Well, not a bad call at all. If you pop that one, it's going to go a long way. This is the last chance Arkansas will have to punt the football with the wind at its back as well. Last few seconds of the third quarter, but he wobbles it. He hopes for a bounce, but it doesn't matter because it was shanked badly right over the top of the Tennessee bench. That takes a sound piece of strategy and shatters it. Fourth quarter coming up. Fouls by seven. We've got a great Lee Apparel SEC game of the week going for you this time. Fourth quarter. And Tennessee on first down. That is Charlie Garner off the left side. Philip Fulmer called his team over to the sideline as they change quarters and we had a commercial and our Lee Apparel game summary after three quarters. Look how even the total yards are. Tennessee was averaging 477 coming in Arkansas only 280. Moe's Phillips on the reception. So Philip Fulham will call the team over there and talk to him, I'm sure, about putting these guys out. Let's knock these guys out of here. This is too scary. We'll get this over with. Life on the road in the SEC. Five receivers on third down and six. to blitz and now we've got a whistle and a flag right guard Jeff Smith number 74 appeared to pull up early I'm not sure they had enough players on the field dead ball foul false start on the offensive line well Jeff Smith one of their more experienced guys even though he's only a sophomore, started 12 games last year. Volunteers averaged 388 yards a game last season. But that'll make it third and 11. Schuler up the middle. Ball deflected. Dean Peavy has it. His second of the year. Seventh of his Arkansas career. Ireland was the man defending on Corey Fleming. Schuler's got a rocket, and he puts all the horsepower behind this one. Great job by Darwin Ireland. He had his hand in there. The ball pops up in the air, and Peavy is the recipient of that freebie. Good job, Dean Peavy. First down at the 47. And a couple of yards out. Calvin with the ball Two, maybe the 49. 
An excellent job by Ireland trailing Corey Fleming there. And Ireland has, throughout his career, been a guy that has come up with a big play at a critical point in time. Second down and eight. A lot of time to go. Just under 14 minutes left. it a bit and Barry Lunny took a shot from Ben Talley as he released the ball is at the volunteer 47 Barry Lunny a man that can deal with the pressure in football in baseball let it go defensively you want the quarterback to know he's gonna get whacked every time he runs that play now Barry's mother has a different feeling about this. <laughs> she doesn't like that kind of treatment to be dished out to her son, but that's the offense and that's the defense. They're down and four. Lunny, a quick pitch to Hebert. Great play on the corner. Victor Brown fought off a blocker, stayed home, and made the tackle. And part of that is that you watch how early this one leaves. This one goes in a hurry. And part of that is you know, I got a bad shoulder, and I mean, this is not what I enjoy. And so Tally is out in that play. There's no cutback lane anymore. Well, the Razorbacks fail to take advantage of the turnover. Doyle Preston is the kicker. He's not kicking well today. A low line drive, and Sean Summers has it at the 16 of Tennessee. 12.51 to go. Volunteers with the ball back. They lead by seven. Well, there's a guy who's uh, getting some hazard duty today. Is that a bungee cord or what? <laughs> All right, Jimmy Reese. Hang with us, buddy. 12.51 to go. Inside the 20, nothing unusual for the Volunteers today. Seven of their 11 drives have started there. They get just over the 20 as James Stewart carries the ball. Well, Florida State hanging tough. They led 21-7 after three. Miami with a field goal, but that high-powered offense has been stopped. Georgia on its way to a much, much needed win at home over Southern Miss. Second down and four. Schuler to Garner. No, check it, it's Stewart. Leading the way on the left side was Jeff Smith. How about that? Mississippi State gave Florida a good tussle last week, and now they're giving Auburn all they want. And they've got their offense on track, Mississippi State. A dollar a minute for all the latest scores in college football. 1-900-267-5757. Another good job by Darwin Ireland on the previous play, filling that lead. You hear that pop up here. First down at the 28. Schuler with play action up the middle, and he rifles it to Billy Williams. Corey Fleming's on a takeoff. That's what Schuler looked for first. He's running. Dean Peavy stayed right with him. He looks deep. It's not there. Now he comes back over the middle. And Billy Williams had separated himself from Orlando Waters. And look at that. Zoom. It gets there in a hurry. There's not much time to make up any ground. Billy up over 300 yards on the year with his work here today. Charlie Garner breaks loose on the corner. And on first down, he will turn that into big yardage. Came out of the JUCO ranks. He's from Falls Church, Virginia. Played out at Scottsdale, Arizona. 2,800 yards, 34 touchdowns there. 928 on the ground for the Volunteers last year. And this year he's averaging 7.2 yards per rush. I mean, so he is a productive back. Sets up a second and one. You got to watch out for Heath Shuler in this situation. But he will just give it to Garner. And they'll take the first down. Wrapping him up, Shannon Wright. Shannon, a busy day on that strong side with Tyrone Chapman 
out with a hamstring. Charlie Garner now 14 carries 62 yards after Wright stopped him there. First down at the 43 of Arkansas. Garner again. What a play that was. Henry Ford hasn't had many tackles today. But he uh, stopped up a blocker that time and made the tackle as well. Right, a clever little switch at the line of scrimmage. You see Darwin no lined up on the outside, Second then jumped back inside. That made Henry Ford responsible for containment, and he took it. Good job by Ford. Took on Jason Lehman, and then he made the tackle. Ken Sachs. That's a bunch. He's, he's, on the, he's tracking Billy Ray Smith's record for tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Open field tackle by Orlando Waters on James Stewart. Try to pop it out in the flat. And give Stewart some time to go, but before he can really get his sights adjusted, Orlando Waters is in his face. Tennessee wants a timeout with 9.33 to go. First timeout the volunteers have called all day long. In the third, Tennessee 21, Arkansas 14. We'll take a timeout as well on our Jefferson Pilot Sports Network and be back with more from Little Rock. Back in Little Rock, Tennessee on top of Arkansas, the Tennessee offensive line has pretty much gone intact the entire day. The one problem with the Tennessee team, they don't have a lot of depth in that offensive line. Now it's a gut check to see how much the guys have left. Right you are, Bob. Three redshirt freshmen and a sophomore among their five backup guys. James Warren, the only senior. And they face a third and five at the Arkansas 38. This is the eighth play of this drive. Schuler on the screen to Stewart. He will get a block and get inside the 30 and down to the 24 for the Tennessee first down. Great call by Heath Schuler, as well as Phil Fulmer on that Tennessee sideline. Yeah, with assistance from Phil Fulmer oh, and sure. Dave Cutcliffe and a couple of other guys. And there's a, you're not going to see it on the screen here, but a great job by Jason Lehman taking down Shannon Wright, number 55. Shannon's trying to get there. That's his guy, and he got cut down by Lehman. Prevented him from making the play. First down at the 24. Stewart running right into the back of Jeff Smith. Regaining his composure and going ahead for a few more yards. And he's going to pick up about eight on first down. Talking to Steve Marshall before the game, he said Jeff Smith and that, well, that interior there with Bubba Miller and Jeff Smith have really, really played well this year. You know, he's happy with the progress of Jason Lehman at one tackle and uh, Leslie Ratliff at the other. And Kevin Mays, a defensive guy that's really coming along. Lehman and Ratliff, both sophomores. Lehman replacing all SEC performer Mike Stoll. Second down and three. Razorbacks put the clamp on that James Stewart carry as Henry Ford was there. Ford was out and around it before Stewart had a chance to cut back underneath. He's a preseason All-SEC player, number 92. Ford dives back to the inside. And, uh, excellent against the run. Most dangerous as a pass rusher. Going to be a fine player in the NFL. Third down and one. Three tight ends in there for Tennessee. They've really got it stacked up. Mose Phillips for the first down. He just angled off the right side and got inside the 15 beyond the 14. And the Volunteers will move the chains with 7.43 to go. A good job by Tennessee. Last time they were thwarted on a fourth and inches try, and that time they knock it in there. And there was no question about where they were going that time. Everybody's lined up on the right side. Twelfth play coming up of this five-minute drive. They started back at their own 16. Out of the eye, Garner straight ahead. Puts that helmet down and squirts through. Vernon Wade tried to corral him, but Garner's down around the 10, maybe the 9. 
Tennessee keeping the ball on the ground, not taking any chances with the football. The last time they had possession of the football, there was an interception on a tip ball. They're just going to run it and run it. Joe Kynes trying to get his guys to dig in. They come after him this time. Second down and seven. Garner again off the left side. You know, Tennessee has not been that much of a fourth quarter team this year. It's the only quarter in which Phil Fulmer's team has been outscored by its opponents, 37-24. But the Razorbacks have been the guys that have come alive when that final gun's about to sound. They've outscored their opponents 32-7. A lot of that, I think, for Tennessee, though, is, as you know, and Bob Kessler would tell us, that they've played a lot of younger guys in that fourth quarter they've got games put away third down and four here Schuler keeping looking for the end zone he will score he Schuler with the second running touchdown of the day and of the season and with 6 11 to go Tennessee tacks on six something that you saw a lot more frequently last year I think this year they're trying to protect him a little bit <laughs> you can tell you can tell he enjoys it but this was standard fare when uh, last year Schuler had uh, a lot of running touchdowns 93 straight for John Bexford a 14 play 84 yard drive and the Volunteers, with 6-11 to go, lead at 28-14. The option is really tough to stop down here in this area, especially when somebody like Schuler's running it. Tyrone Chapman has not been able to play for Arkansas, and it's kind of hurt him. There you see number 44, Mark Smith. Now, he should be attacking that play more upfield and forcing a decision earlier. But Schuler just runs it right in. I'm not sure that it would have made much difference. That was a great block by the man in your screen there for a moment. 44, Mario Brunson, who sent the other 44, Mark Smith, reeling. 6-11 to go. Razorbacks will get the ball back. They'll be down by 14. That's right. Forget it. That wind has been blowing all day from the north at the back of the kicker from left to right. Nothing happening in returns at the other end of the field, and so the Razorbacks into that wind will try to get back in the game after Tennessee went 84 yards in six and a half minutes. They've had some impressive drives today. They've had two 80-yard drives and one of 84. Arkansas inside the 20, six of its 10 times starting out today. Very running with time up the middle, but he bounced it before it got to JJ. I wonder if that shoulder is bothering him and caused him to underthrow it a bit. Well, I'm sure the shoulder bothers him to trying to stick it in there when those guys now they're playing pass defense now and they're pass rushing. You know, they're not having to mess around with the run, they're coming after him, and he knows that. Those linebackers get a little bit more depth, so all the seams start to kind of squeeze shut. Second and ten. Left side toss. And that is Kirk Kotkin, the tight end, with his fourth catch of the day. Scott Gallion there. Jason Parker there. And they're double teaming Botkin. He just used his body, pushed up field, and then leaned into that inside guy and broke it to the outside. Lunny put it on the money. 80 catches for Kirk in his outstanding career. And here's a very important third and two. The deep man Hebert puts his head down, and he had to get to the 30. <laughs> And it appears that he might have just made it. That's an easy one for the officials because they know they started right at the 20. Doesn't require a measurement. And Arkansas will move the change with five and a half to go. But Tim, if they have designs on tying or winning this game, they've got to get a pretty quick scoring drive here. That's exactly right. And that's They scored a couple of times right near the end of the game against Georgia, though. One of those was a, a turnover was involved. But... The Metters can fly. Money with a little toss. And 
and uh, Oscar Gray on the reception on to the 35 yard line. Arkansas has all of its timeouts remaining. Five minutes and running now. Tennessee has used one of its timeouts. And they'll go with a no huddle. But it's time to test them down downfield a little bit with 440 left to go in the game. A little longer that time. Metters on the sideline. And he'll get out of bounds. Into Tennessee territory down at the 43. Nice route and a great throw by Barry Lunny. You know, Ronald Davis, number one for Tennessee, of course, is thinking security, think deep. That's, that may be a little bit too deep. And if he was supposed to get help from underneath from Jason Parker, he should talk to him a little bit. Direct him out there, Ronald. Say, get out wide. Got a guy on the sideline. 22 yards on that play. First down at the Tennessee 43. You know, Lovey Smith is the secondary coach of Tennessee, and he does a he does a great job working with these guys. Some of them haven't had much experience. Similar play. Metters has it at the Tennessee 31. Now that time it was clear that Parker was coming from the inside. And that Ronald Davis is counting on him to get there. Horace Morris tries to spin underneath. Blunny. Focusing in on Metters, he breaks it out. The cornerback ex expecting help from the safety underneath. His fourth catch of the day, 62 yards in receptions. First down at the 31. Arkansas has the back split wide. They both go into the pattern. Up the middle. A little uh, low and outside uh, sinking fastball to Kirk Botkin. And there was some good pressure on the left hand. Right, and there was this. A sinking lineman in Barry Lunny's face that time. This is not a soft surface. This is not a peaceful way to go down. Horace Morris coming from the left side this time. Yo, boom. Lunny's been courageous this afternoon. Hung in there with that bad shoulder. 16 of 22 for 173 yards. Second down and 10. And a draw play. Oscar Gray with some room out to the left side. Look it down to the Tennessee 27-yard line. Clock continues to run. 4.15 to go. One good thing, it's good to see Chris Oliver back there at that left offensive tackle spot. Good to see his knees feeling better. Arkansas spends the timeout. Their drive continues when we do. And here in War Memorial Stadium, Little Rock, 4.15 to go. Tennessee leads Arkansas, 28-14. Razorbacks face a third and five. They're nine of 16 on third down today. Gary Lunny floods the pattern. Ball is tipped. Shane Burton, a tight end last year. He was a third stringer, played 12 ball games. Former All-American defensive lineman and tight end out of Catawba, North Carolina. And they're trying to stick it in here to Kirk Botkin. You see number 89 on the right side of your screen. Little push off now. There comes the ball, but nice job by Shane Burton. Well, Razorbacks have no choice. They've got to go on fourth and five. This could be the ball game for them right here. sophomore who backs up at middle linebacker behind Reggie Ingram gets the INT. 